Okay, in this video we're going to talk about how to find a formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence. Um, and so it's not super complicated, you just have to remember a couple things. Um, so let's kind of dig in. So um, first, it's good to know what the general form looks like. So using the first term, which would be a sub 1, um, we could write our formula as a sub n equals a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 1. And I kind of color-coded things there, so you'll notice the two n's are the same color, and the two 1's are the same color, and then r I used um, red. Um, so that's if we know the first term of the sequence, we could uh, write our formula that way. Um, but sometimes you don't know the first term, but you do know some, some kind of random term. So if we know a random term, which is just a sub m, so you use n and m uh, frequently, and they sound very similar, but this is a sub m. Uh, we could write our formula as a sub n equals a sub m times r to the n minus m. So you'll notice uh, the only real difference there is in the first formula we use a sub 1, and then it's n minus 1. Here we're using a sub m, and then it's n minus m. So as long as those are the same number, um, things are, are going well. Um, and so with geometric sequences, you have to be able to figure out r, the common ratio. And a key thing is, we can actually use either of these formulas to figure out the value of r. So you might have learned in class that it's the ratio of consecutive terms, which it definitely is, but sometimes you don't have consecutive terms. Um, and if you do it the same way every time, it's just a little bit easier to remember. So we're actually going to use these formulas to find the value of r instead of just something that we memorized. Uh, so let's do an example. So in this example, we know that a sub 1 is 12, which is good because that means I can just write my formula in terms of the first term. Um, and a sub 2 is equal to 8. So what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm just going to plug into the formula. So I know, and I'm actually going to write out the formula here. So a sub n should be a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. And now I'm going to plug in what I know. So I know a sub 1 is 12. So that means a sub n is actually 12 times r to the n minus 1. And now what I want to do is I want to figure out the value of r. So I know one other thing. The other thing I know is that a sub 2 is equal to 8. So um, just based on the formula, I can replace all the n's with 2. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to show that step. So a sub 2 is equal to 12 times r to the 2 minus 1. And 2 minus 1 is just 1. Um, and now I'm going to replace a sub 2 with 8 because we know that a sub 2 is equal to 8. So I have 8 is equal to 12 and then r to the 2 minus 1, which is just r to the first. So 8 equals 12r is basically what that says, which means that r is equal to 8 over 12, or 2 thirds. So I know the first term, and I know the common ratio, and what I can do then is just, uh, I'm actually going back to kind of the second line there, where it's a sub n is 12r to the n minus 1. I'm going to replace r with 2 thirds, because that's what I figured out it equals. So I get 12. 2 thirds to the n minus 1, and that's my formula. So it's really not that bad. You do have to remember what the general formula looks like, but if you can remember that, then you can pretty much solve the problem without uh, any issues. Let's do another example where we don't have the first term and we don't have consecutive terms. So this one's uh, potentially much harder, but it's actually not harder at all. So we are told that a sub 6 is 1,458, a sub 10 is 118,098, and um, for the purposes of the problem, we're going to say r is greater than 0, and I'll explain why later on, but we just have this restriction that r has to be greater than 0. So I'm going to begin uh, with the general formula. It doesn't use a sub 1, but uses kind of a sub m, and I'm going to use a sub 6 as kind of my basis for the formula. So it's going to be a sub n is a sub 6, and then r to the n minus 6. So the two 6s need to be the same. Um, the two n's need to be the same, and then we have r. So we start with this, and now I'm going to fill in. So I know a sub 6, so this is really the same as a sub n is 1458 times r to the n minus 6. Um, now I, my, I need to figure out what r is, so I'm going to use the other thing I know, which is a sub 10. So I'm going to replace um, every n that I see with 10. So I'm showing a step that maybe you won't show when you get very good at this, um, but right now I'm showing it. So r to the 10 minus 6, and 10 minus 6 is just 4. Um, I'm going to now replace a sub 10 with what it equals, which is um, 18, 118,098. So I have 118,098 equals uh, 1458 r to the 4th. 
And now I just need to solve for r. So if I divide by 1458, I get r to the 4th is 81. And now here's where the restriction came in. r has to be greater than 0, which means in this case, uh, I'm taking the 1 4th power of each side, so raising each side to the 1 4th power, gives me r is equal to, in this case, 3. It's also true that negative 3 to the 4th power is 81, but since r has to be greater than 0, I'm just using that. Um, so I have r is equal to 3, and now I can write my formula. So I'm going to go kind of to the second line, a sub n is 1458, r to the n minus 6, and plug in for r. So a sub n is 1458, and 3 to the n minus 6. So that's one version of the answer. Um, but remember, I made a choice when I used a sub 6. I actually could have used a sub 10 and done all the work, it would have worked out essentially the same. So I could also write my answer as a sub n is um, a sub 10, which is 118,098, and then 3 to the n minus 10. So since I use a sub 10 as my coefficient, I then have to use n minus 10. Um, so that's another option, And but there's more. So it's not so typical to write it in terms of a sub 6 or a sub 10. It's way more common to write it in terms of a sub 1. So to do that, I'd need to find a sub 1. So I'm going to use the first formula that I wrote there, um, 1458 times 3 to the n minus 6, to find that. So um, a sub 1 should be 1458 times 3 to the 1 minus 6. And if you work that out, that's actually just 6. Um, and now I know a sub 1 is 6, so I can rewrite my formula again and get a sub n is 6 times 3 to the n minus 1. So any of those three is valid. Um, I think the last one is probably way more common. Um, but I, I just hope this video was helpful, and uh, good luck.